Hi, my name is Christine DiCarlo, and I'm with the American Association of Colleges of Osteopathic Medicine, and I'm here today with, to talk with Sean Ham. Hi, everybody. Sean is a recent graduate of the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine and soon-to-be resident, yes. and he is the current osteopathic health policy intern with ACOM. So, Sean, I'm here today to talk to you about advocacy and your involvement with ed to med in your OP role. Great. Uh, so my first question for you is, you are the first, fam first person in your family to become a doctor, and you had a non-traditional path to medical school. Can you describe how medical school, your medical school trajectory and the impact your life and work experiences have had on your advocacy? Sure, absolutely. Um, my, uh, my trajectory to medical school has certainly not been a straight one right to it. Uh, it's definitely been twists and turns. Um, I originally, in 2009, did not get accepted into medical school, uh, and that led me uh, down a different road that I wasn't anticipating. Uh, they usually say when one door closes, another door opens. So uh, that led me into my master's in public health, uh, and then later uh, opened a few more doors into healthcare administration. I had a five-year uh, career in healthcare administration. Um, during that five years, I actually did quite a bit of advocacy. Um, some of it was um, involved with the federally qualified health centers that I was the administrator of. So I had um, three community health centers that I was in, uh, the manager of. Um, and through that experience, I had the opportunity to um, advocate for my patients every single day. Um, and then later I was at the Florida Department of Health, which opened up opportunities for advocacy in uh, the state and national level. And so um, it was a winding road uh, getting to medical school. Eventually I ended up at the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. Um, and uh, here I am today. Uh, after four years of, of advocacy through medical school and uh, uh, it's been quite a journey. That's great, very interesting. Yeah. Um, so after making the decision to follow your dream of becoming a doctor, mm -hmm. you made sure that advocacy was part of your extremely busy schedule as a med student. Can you talk a little bit about what inspired you con to continue to be involved with advocacy during your med school career? Sure, absolutely. So during medical school, it's quite uh, in time intensive and uh, work intensive uh, for years. And something that really sparked my uh, advocacy again in medical school was um, I was sitting in class one day and I opened up the email uh, that, uh, from my student loan uh, servicer uh, and they said, here's the amount of debt you've accrued so far. And it was pretty shocking. It was pretty shocking. And so um, that really kind of lit the flame for wanting to advocate about student loan debt. Um, and secondly, it was, it was uh, when I got involved in student uh, leadership um, as the student government president, um, I had the opportunity to go to the Council of Osteopathic Student Government Presidents uh, conferences throughout the country. And on my first meeting with COSGP, uh, I got to meet a AACOM, ACOM's government relations team, including Pamela Murphy and Mary Lynn Bender, where they were so inspiring. They, they really had this passion for sharing the, the issues, the policy issues that were affecting medical students. And when they shared their uh, information update, it really, really inspired me to continue my, my advocacy work, and that's where I jumped on board with Ed to Med, and and uh, it was it's been a great journey since then. Yeah, it was, it was great. Yeah, and you're certainly one of our most active Ed to Med advocates. Um, you've recently shared your story on a blog post. Mm -hmm. You're consistently speaking up on social media, um, and you were also a panelist in our Ed to Med town hall this year. Yes. Um, so can you talk more a little bit about ed to med how it's impacted your advocacy, and why others should get involved in the campaign? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I couldn't have done what I did with advocacy in the last four years without ed to med And I think some of the points you just made are very relevant for those students 
that want to get involved with Ed to Med. I think at the end of the day, it's really the resources that Ed to Med provides, including um, including the Ed to Med blog. You have the opportunity to share your story uh, with with the whole Ed to Med audience, with with everyone. Uh, you can share your story that that's a little more involved than just a tweet or a Facebook post. Um, you can really lay it on the line so that you can share it with the, the, your lawmakers or anyone uh, that you'd like to, to hear your story. Um, I think also it's the EdMed um, advocacy alerts that uh, they send out to us, very important. Sometimes I know myself, I wasn't able to put the words together the right way uh, to advocate on about a certain issue to my lawmakers. And when you have a resource like Ed to Med that can pull that language together for you in an effective way and then immediately share that with your lawmaker, it makes being an advocate much, much easier. Um, as well as being an Ed to Med campus ambassador. Uh, I signed up to be an Ed to Med campus ambassador and I would highly recommend anyone that's interested in being an advocate on their campus uh, for Ed to Med to sign up as an Ed to Med campus ambassador. Yeah, that program is great if you're really interested in taking your advocacy a little deeper and growing a grassroots movement on your mm -hmm. campus. Mm -hmm. um, so you're obviously clearly involved and engaged in advocacy and you came into the osteopathic health policy internship as a very strong advocate. Um, from your perspective, what are some of the major takeaways of the OP, Osteopathic Health Policy Intern Program, and what would you say to other med students that are considering applying? Um, absolutely. I think the Osteopathic Health Policy Internship was probably one of the best experiences of my medical school career. Um, I think for me, it was an opportunity to uh, take my advocacy to a new level. Uh, I think it was a unique experience that not a lot of students get to have during medical school. Uh, you get to spend two months in Washington, D.C. Who gets to do that, right? Um, and, and I think it's, um, it was an opportunity for me to grow professionally. Uh, you get to learn the insider tips of, of being in the political arena right here in D.C. Uh, you get to learn uh, how, uh, how to take a lot of information that's thrown at you all the time and synthesize it down into um, understandable, quick facts in your own language uh, so that you can more effectively talk about those issues. Um, and uh, working with the ACOM GR team, I mean, everybody has such an, an amazing role there uh, at, at the GR office and just working uh, with each of you guys has been really a tremendous experience. Oh, with you too, Sean. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, so as a seasoned advocate, I'm curious if you have any advocacy lessons learned that you'd like to share with the viewers. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I actually brought my, my list here with me today. Um, I have seven of them to share with everybody. Um, and the first one I think that's really important is to make advocacy a habit. Um, use your voice and tell your story. Uh, something amazing is that I realized people are listening. When you share your story, it's amazing how many people actually want to listen uh, to what you have to say. Uh, lesson number two uh, is join a grassroots movement like Ed to Med. Uh, to stay informed and have a unified voice. I can't stress enough uh, how important it is that you have a unified voice, you have a unified message when you're trying to reach out to your lawmakers or, or anyone you're trying to share your, um, your advocacy message with. Um, lesson number three, develop the ability to synthesize difficult policy topics into easily digestible formats. Like I mentioned before, there's so much information out there. There's so many news articles. There's so many reports that can be thrown at you that you're constantly reading. So when you're able to break that all down into smaller components, 
so that you really gain an, a full understanding of what's going on. I think that's a great skill to have and a, a very important lesson that I learned. Lesson number four, social media is a useful tool for advocacy and awareness, but really it's not your best friend. And, and to expand on that a little bit, it, it is such an important tool. You can access and get your message out quickly to um, uh, your audience um, and connect with people you never in a million years thought that you could connect with. But something that came up in a lot of the uh, conversations and forums that I got to attend these last two months um, was that it's really important not to let social media take over those in-person uh, communication and relationships that you have. Um, it's so important that you continue to engage people in person uh, and not let social media take over. Um, lesson number five, don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone, attend meetings, and talk to strangers. It's a small world, and I learned that at a number of different meetings I had um, while I was here uh, as an intern. Um, I started talking to some folks at meetings, and somehow, some way, they were connected to graduate medical education, to osteopathic medical education. Um, it was incredible how connected we are when you actually just get out of your comfort zone and, and talk to people. Lesson number six, there's so much to learn and so little time. So health policy is an expansive topic. So really try to hone in on the issues that you really want to focus on because otherwise it can, be, it can, it can just grow and grow and grow until it, it's too much to take on all at once. And lastly, and I think most importantly, lesson number seven is that advocacy is the antidote to burnout. Um, clinician burnout, uh, burnout in general, stress, uh, it really affects a lot of people these days and especially in the healthcare profession, um, stress and burnout is a big, big topic right now. And something that I have gained over the last two months uh, through my different conversations with healthcare leaders is that when you advocate for why you're here and what got you involved in the first place and what you're passionate about, it really reinvigorates that, that spirit of, uh, of why you're doing what you're doing. And so I really highly recommend getting involved with ad advocacy so that you can avoid any of that burnout that might come down the road. Yeah, that's a nice and uh, maybe unexpected benefit of advocacy. Absolutely. But very important. Yeah, absolutely. So my final question for you, Sean, sure. you know, as you're about to embark on this new phase of your career as a resident, mm -hmm. how do you plan to keep advocacy a part of your life? So uh, I, I think that uh, from what I hear, residency is going to be absolutely crazy <laughs> and very time intensive. Um, and my schedule will be full all the time. But like I've said in the past, uh, especially at the Ed to Med Town Hall, it's all about um, taking the time to continue to be an advocate. Um, and you can do it in many different ways. And like I've shared before, you can take five minutes, use the Ed to Med resources that are available, and reach out to your lawmakers and, and share your message and share uh, your voice. Uh, for me personally, I intend to continue to read the Washington Insider, which I think is an incredible resource from ACOM. Uh, I, th that alone in and of itself will keep me updated on what's going on here on the Hill. Um, I intend to continue to be involved with the Ed to Med campaign. Uh, I know I won't be a student anymore, but that doesn't mean that I can't continue to advocate for student loan debt and everything like that. Um, I really hope that I can continue to encourage people to be an Ed, ed to Med Canvas ambassador um, and hopefully be able to take time during my busy schedule to attend meetings here in Washington, D.C. Uh, and prioritize them as something that I want to do in the future uh, and stay involved with things like the ACOM uh, Calm Day on the Hill 
uh, that's coming up here in the fall. Uh, so through those many uh, different resources that are offered through ed to med uh, through ACOM government relations, I hope I can still stay involved even though I'll be uh, out in the world of residency uh, in the future. All right, well, thank you so much, Sean. Thanks for talking with us today. Yeah, and everyone listening, uh, if you're interested in advocacy, if you're inspired by Sean's great work, please visit edtomed.com or connect with us on social media on Twitter and Facebook. Thanks. Thank you.